For decades, Africa reigned supreme in paleoanthropology. The world was witness to spectacular human evolutionary discoveries, from the Leakey's Homo habilis to Don Johansson's Lucy to Lee Berger's Homo naledi. In the last two decades, Southeast Asia and Melanesia have increasingly taken center stage in paleoanthropological research. Paleoanthropologists in these regions are now challenging the dominance of the fossil hunters in Africa. But with each of the new discoveries, we realize how little we know about the various hominid species in Southeast Asia and Melanesia. And the phylogenetic charts and genomic analysis mapping our human species are growing increasingly complex. Homo erectus. Denisovans, Homo floresiensis, Homo lucinensis. As we shall soon see, these recently discovered South Asian and Melanesian fossils challenge the traditional out of Africa dogma. They also lend credence to the multi regional origins and continuity model long advocated by the pioneers of anthropology, many of whom braved the jungles, mountains, and caves of Asia and Melanesia. Southeast Asia Fossil Finds They have been dubbed Southern Denisovans, separate from the Altai branch of Denisovans. In 2022, an international team led by Australia's Kira Westerway and Laura Shackelford from the University of Illinois discovered a Denisovan tooth in Ta Pai Ling Cave in Laos. The tooth, estimated to be over 130,000 years ago, is the first Denisovan fossil ever found in Southeast Asia. The discovery significantly expands the known temporal spatial range of Denisovans, showing they inhabited a much wider area than previously thought. The unique shape of the tooth suggests that Denisovans in Southeast Asia might represent a separate species or subspecies from the Altai Denisovans. What we are beginning to see emerge are three branches of Denisovans, Altai and Southern, with a third branch that may not be Denisovan at all. It is this third branch that may have contributed substantially to the DNA of modern Papuans and Australian Aborigines. Recent Discoveries in Indonesia Mainstream paleoanthropologists were shaken to their core in 2003 when a new hominid was discovered, challenging their preconceived notions and evolutionary timelines. Quote, One of the first things I thought of on learning about the Flores skeleton was a possible parallel with the Orang Pendek. End quote. Chris Stringer, London Natural History Museum. Note, the Orang Pendek is a fabled ape man that roams the jungles of Indonesia. Professor Bart Roberts of the University of Wollongong, Australia, DH.AU, quote, I was simultaneously gobsmacked, puzzled, and amused, end quote. Roberts quoted in Nature 2014, quote, wrong place at the wrong time, it looks completely odd, end quote. Roberts recalled how team members joked that the skeleton resembled a leprechaun or the fabled Ebogogo of the Indonesian forests. During a traditional Australian celebratory event, Westaway, 
Mike Morwood and Gert Von Denberg jokingly referred to it as a hobbit. The name stuck. Live science. Scientists discovered the first Homo floresiensis fossil in 2003 in the Liangbua cave on the island of Flores. Paper 2004, a small hominid from the island of Flores. Here we report the discovery from the late Pleistocene of Flores, Indonesia, of an adult hominid with a tiny stature and small endocranial volume, equal to that of the smallest known Australopithecines. Continuing, the most likely explanation for its existence on Flores is long-term isolation with subsequent endemic dwarfing of an ancestral Homo erectus. We have covered the hobbits extensively on this channel, but very recent finds shed further light on this enigmatic dwarf hominid species. Sulawesi Ars Technica 2016 Sulawesi is part of the Indonesian island chain that forms a gentle curve in the waters between Southeast Asia, the Philippines, and Australia. Continuing, when early humans were arriving during the Pleistocene, Australia and New Guinea were one continent called Sahul and many of the Indonesian islands were connected by land. As an example, Neanderthal enthusiasts might recall Doggerland, the now submerged land that once connected the British Isles to continental Europe. In 2016, scientists announced the discovery of stone tools dated to over 200,000 years ago on Sulawesi. They were found in a rock shelter at Leang Burong. Earliest hominid occupation of Sulawesi, Indonesia. Paper 2016. Our findings suggest that Sulawesi, like Flores, was host to a long established population of archaic hominids, the ancestral origins and taxonomic status of which remain elusive. The geochronological dating of the topography where the stone tools were found confirms that. Archaic Asians were on Sulawesi hundreds of thousands of years before the arrival of the first Homo sapiens. abc.net.au 2016 The discovery published today in Nature overturns the view that humans were the first to enter the island between 50,000 years ago and 60,000 years ago. Sea levels were lower 70,000 years ago. It is likely these Asian archaics arrived on Sulawesi on rudimentary watercraft, but it is also possible they arrived on floating vegetation. Their tools, meticulously crafted from stone, hinted at the advanced capabilities of ancient humans, though who made them remains a mystery. CBC, Ancient Tools Show Mysterious Human Species on Indonesian Island, 2016. Continuing, scientists have announced the discovery of stone tools at least 118,000 years old at a site called Talepo on the island of Sulawesi. Continuing, Dr. Gerrit van Denberg from the University of Wollongong said it was likely this earlier inhabitant was related to the dwarf-sized hobbit Homo floresiensis. Ars Technica 2016 It might even have been Denisovans who lived in Southeast Asia over 200,000 years ago and whose genetic traces can still be found in the DNA of modern people in the region. The Conversation 2018 the Sulawesi tools could belong to one of several human species, including Homo erectus and Homo floresiensis, 
the dwarf-like hobbits of Flores. Continuing, or it might have been Denisovans, cousins of Neanderthals who met early Aboriginal people in Southeast Asia, leaving a genetic legacy in their descendants. Migrations across Sahul and Sunda. Clarification, Sunda refers to the landmass from 70,000 years ago created by lower sea levels, connecting Sumatra to Malaysia. Sahul refers to the landmass connecting Australia to New Guinea. In 1963, British archaeologist and adventurer Ian Glover discovered 10 stone tools at various cave sites on East Timor. Another find in 2006, Australian archaeologist Sue O'Connor uncovered stone tools and decorated seashells on East Timor. They were dated to 46,000 years ago. Sydney Morning Herald 2006, the find raised big questions. Why did modern humans bypass Flores on their way to Timor? One possibility was that the hobbits were able to repel them. Continuing, quote, it is